from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data SV 2016. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live in San Jose, California at Big Data SV, which is part of Big Data Week, which is concurrent with Structure Comp. It's really ground zero for big data this week in San Jose at the convention center. We're at the Fairmont in the Gold Room. Have a little event tomorrow night, Wednesday night. If you're in the area, come on by about 4.30. Promises to be entertaining. And we're really excited about this next guest. This is a special company uh, in the history of of the Cube, you know, we do about 1,100 interviews, 1,200 interviews a year, and every once in a while we get a special one where we get book signings and I don't think we had any animals yet launch companies. <laughs> but this company launched at Big Data NYC, our first big data event in 2013. So we're really happy to welcome Nenshan Bardaliwa. Did I get it? Close enough. Close. Bardaliwala. I'm very sorry. No worries. Co founder and chief product officer. Fixata. So welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, so hopefully you've pulled up that clip and uh, and, and you saw it again is really we, uh, you know, we watch it every day religiously <laughs> in the office. Very good. Huh. So give us an update. Things have obviously changed since 2013. Actually, I think we had someone from Fixata on at the Spark Summit uh, in San Francisco that last year. That sounds as well. right. That sounds right. So uh, you know, obviously we're we're very proud. We have a long history. Uh, our company was launched at the Strata Conference uh, on the Cube. So that's very exciting. Uh, and look, you know, the, when, when we started the company in 2012 as just four guys in a basement in Redwood City, uh, we said to ourselves, you know, the, the market had clearly changed, right? We, we were going from a world where people were using uh, re relational database technologies, and uh, we were clearly seeing the move towards uh, Hadoop and other NoSQL technologies like Mongo and Couchbase and, you know, many others. Uh, and on the other hand, we were also seeing the move on the end user side towards self-service, right? People were, were tired of waiting for IT organizations to give them what they needed. They wanted to be able to have the power in their own hands. Uh, and so it was with those two insights that we, we decided that there was a missing layer, right? You, you know, the, the myth is that you can just take Tableau and slap it on Hadoop and then magic happens, right? Uh, and I can most, most assuredly tell you that magic does not happen unless you have Paxata. Uh, and so the uh, the real breakthrough for us was was knowing that there needed to be a third leg of the stool, where uh, being able to empower somebody to turn raw data that was being landed in a system like Hadoop uh, and turn it into information on the fly so that they could power their analytics would be the next major wave. And uh, here we are two and a half years later, and uh, you know we have no shortage of companies who have suddenly found self-service data prep religion, and you know we welcome that. Uh, but you know, as the pioneer uh, of the space and the category, uh, it's been a really exciting journey so far. So give us an update, funding, customers, employees, kind of give us the quick uh, 411. Sure, so um, from a funding perspective, uh, we are a Series C funded company. So we did our Series C funding uh, last year. Uh, we announced it in the middle of the year. Uh, we are very fortunate to be funded by uh, both uh, Excel Partners India, which is our original uh, investor, and then we've added EDBI, which is the Economic Development Board of the Government of Singapore. So uh, we made a very strategic uh, decision to partner with them uh, because, as you can imagine, there are really exciting business opportunities in Asia and, and the, the broader market, and being able to partner with a, with a fund of that caliber uh, allowed us to have an anchor point in uh, in the Asia Pac region, so uh, we completed the Series C in uh, in the middle of 2015. Uh, we have been expanding extremely rapidly. Uh, we have doubled uh, the number of people we have in the organization. Uh, very happy to say that I'm not the only guy running around doing demos on a MacBook. Uh, <laughs> took more than two years to get out of that mode. That was not fun. Uh, but uh, we know we now have a very mature field organization, uh, both here in the United States with folks in seven different regions. Uh, we have people on the ground in Singapore, uh, in Korea. Uh, very soon, uh, we'll have more news on the Europe front. Uh, but we're, we're expanding from a people perspective very significantly. We're at about 70 people right now. Um, in terms of uh, customers, you know, uh, you know, we're obviously the, 
the customers who are using our software get a significant competitive advantage. So I won't go into details or names, but um, we're very proud to say that we, uh, you know, the top three banks in the United States are all Paxata customers. Uh, we have a very strong foothold in the United States government. Uh, our technology, which allows analysts to be able to pull data together, turns out to be very useful for very specific mission critical use cases, uh, which I will not go into any detail about here, uh, lest this conversation end very abruptly. Um, then uh, we're also very fortunate to have, you know, the world's number one semiconductor company, the world's number one company in, in audit and assurance. Um, we've, we've been very fortunate to really uh, put a stake in the ground as being the enterprise class mission critical data preparation platform. Uh, if, you, if you look at the market, uh, you're really seeing a bifurcation, right? There are, there are a number of very good and useful desktop type tools, uh, people who have freemium models who are going that route. Uh, and we saw that very early on, and we made the decision in 2013 that we were going to be the enterprise class standard. And that bet has paid off with the, the caliber and types of customers that we've been able to bring in. Um, so, so Nenshad, let's, let's dig into that a little bit. You know, one of the things we've learned in, in sort of following the big data marketplace was that the platform itself, um, in the form of Hadoop, needed a lot of simplification. Yeah. But, uh, and, and we're slowly getting better on that, sort of bending management tools around the expanding zoo, mm -hmm. you know, of animals, um, including the use of Zookeeper. But the other, the other uh, challenge customers face is the complexity of the data, which is one of the attributes of, of Hadoop, which is, you know, pour it all in yeah. and then let's figure it out. That's right. So, so tell us you know, the progress we've made since your launch in, in, in making that easier to do? Ah, great, great question. So um, it's, it's a very interesting juxtaposition of, of two things that we've decided to do. On the one hand, you have the big data environment. And at a conference like, like Strata, you're going to hear people talking about, you know, key value stores and, oh, my nested JSON didn't behave the way I wanted to when I parsed it, which is a very nice technical conversation, uh, but it's not something that you hear business people talking about. Um, so, so on the one hand, we did bet technologically, and by the way, we were also a pioneer here in 2013, we bet on Apache Spark way before all the Spark mania really you know, took off. Um, so we knew that the underpinnings of our system, if we were going to be relevant in the enterprise environment of today, had to be based on big data technology. However, the, what we juxtaposed that with was the ability for uh, the mere mortals among us, the average user, to have a point and click declarative environment where they could actually manipulate the data interactively, right? So instead of writing pig scripts or instead of building a script generator, what our end users want to be able to do is press a button that says, you know, I want to pivot these columns or I want to profile this data and create a filter. So what we've been able to do uh, in terms of expanding the market of people who have access to data is to combine a really easy front end where frac frankly the uh, the way we qualify our end users is I ask them do you do you know what a VLOOKUP is in Excel and you know if they'll give you that knowing look right yes this person clearly knows what a VLOOKUP is do you work with pivot tables in Excel well yeah I work with pivot tables too great if you know those two techniques in Excel you will be a very successful Paxata user so it's really the yin and yang between a very fluid, easy to use interactive experience combined with a very powerful Spark-based backend platform that we have been building over the last two and a half years. It just strikes me, Peter Burris on an earlier interview talked about, um, you know, these cars will never be successful because there just aren't enough chauffeurs. Um, and, it, <laughs> it, and I'm thinking of the whole data science meme right. and the data scientist meme. No, there aren't enough chauffeurs. No, there aren't enough data scientists. Yeah. But that's not the end game. That's not no. the path to success. So, so Prakash, uh, Prakash Naduri, who is our, uh, my co-founder and our CEO, um, he likes to say there's a data scientist in all of us, right? Um, we, we identified very early on in the market uh, that there's a hierarchy of skill sets that people have in the enterprise, right? At, at the very top of the pyramid are the 200,000 to 500,000 data scientists, right? These are extremely skilled people uh, that understand statistics, they understand how to program, and they have domain expertise. There are not enough of them to build an enterprise software company that can reach really, really big scale, which is why what do you see happening in the data science community is it's largely driven by open source. Great. So, uh, so building products exclusively for data scientists did not seem like a sensible thing for us. 
Um, then there's the developer community or the data engineering community. And you see what's happening there is that um, there are traditional tools, right, in, that, that have existed for a long time for developers um, that have, you know, I'd say reached the, the end of their useful life. Uh, but the point is it's a very crowded space. So the insight that we had in 2013 that's really paid off is that we need to go one level below on the pyramid and really expand the market of people who can do this. There are hundreds of millions of people who know how to use Excel, and if they can prepare data in the same way that they can build visualizations intelligently in Tableau, we could have a really successful company. That's funny, you sound just like Christian Chabot, uh, Chabot who we interviewed at that Tableau, I think in 2013, who again really said it's the Excel people, right? There's a lot of people that know there Excel. Are. That's really right. a rich our opportunity to give them a new tool beyond what they've had. So, so if you could take all the Excel uh, skilled people in an organization and give them access to, to the underlying traditional data sources and big data sources, what kind of opportunity would you have to transform those businesses? And the tool, right. That's right. The data and the tool. So you've been around long enough now to have some customers make it, you know, far farther along down the journey than just um, sort of tr trialing and, and doing proofs Absolutely. of concept. So what are some of the applications that you've seen, or first, um, how, how have some of these sort of self-service customers um, or users been able to refine data to where it's consumable by analytics? Right. What, you know, what's, what have they done so far? Great question. So um, we, we have been successful in uh, building a customer, customer base across a number of different interest, industries, right? Uh, financial services, the government sector, healthcare, uh, consumer products, et cetera. So I'll pick, I'll pick some of my favorite, favorite use cases just to walk through. Um, one of the most interesting uh, statistics that we like to talk about is the amount of money that's been spent on, on fines due to violating regulations in the financial services industry. Uh, do either of you want to guess uh, how much money in aggregate banks have spent uh, in paying off fines since 2008? Probably not enough. <laughs> but that's a I, different I, conversation. I might get myself in trouble by guessing, but I... I was in I, the banking business before. I think I've seen the numbers being in the billions. Hundreds of billions. In penalties. Hundreds of billions oh. in penalties. $250 billion. Oh, that I didn't know. It's, it's 2009. It, to 2008, when we had the financial crisis. So when you're in that kind of environment, right, the banks are looking for any way possible to be able to make sure that they can keep the money in the bank yeah. and not give it to the regulators. So why are the top three banks in the United States Paxata customers? Because one of the regulations that they have, and there are many, uh, is called CCAR. It's otherwise known as the stress test. Right? Oh, right. And in the stress test, you have to monitor not only the quality of the data that you're feeding into your models, but also the quality of the models themselves. Right? So what they do is they actually use Paxata to be able to allow business domain experts, the analysts who actually understand that's, that is a correct counterparty transaction. That is not a correct counterparty transaction. You can't expect IT, IT people to understand that. That's not their expertise. Right, right. But if you put the power into the hands of the business domain experts, and they can, in a point-and-click fashion, actually highlight the exceptions, highlight which data elements look like they could be suspect, they can completely uh, collapse the amount of time it takes for them to go from detecting an issue to being able to remediate it. So. Why, why are the regulatory, uh, the, the strong industries where regulatory pressures are high adopting Paxata? Because they can, at interactive speed, bring a billion rows plus into a Spark cluster that has Paxata's technology on it, and point and click and find the, the needles in the haystack, take those needles, and immediately start processing it. So there's a, there's a tremendous value to putting in high volume interactive data preparation at scale into the hands of, of the analysts who actually understand that. So that's one example. Okay. So wait, hold on. I got, I got okay. to stop you there. So one of my favorite questions is, you know, billion data points. How do you pump it into visualization and find actionable data? So so how does that actually yeah. how does that actually work to find? I mean, how does the needle surface itself in that scenario that you just great, outlined? Great question. So we we have uh, a capability or technology that we call filter grams, right? And uh, we we made the bet very early on because we went with Spark that we wanted to be the vendor that could do interactive data prep at very large scale. So the point number one is to find the needles, you have to have all the data. 
if you're sampling data and then running batch jobs, you're no better off than you, you were in the traditional ETL world, right? So our vision and now what we've delivered is that you can load all the data into a cluster and now you actually have random access to that data. You're looking at a user interface and you can scroll to literally any point in this multi-billion row data set and actually get access to it. So number one is you have to have all the data. Okay. Number two is you have to have both visual as well as algorithmic tools that help you find the needle in the haystack, right? So on the visual tools perspective, um, we're announcing here at the conference our spring 2016 release, and one of the investments we've made is in our filtergram capability, which are basically visual histograms. And those histograms are really interesting because, again, they're single click. You don't have to code anything. You click on a column, and you'll immediately see the distribution of all the values. So when you're looking for that needle, you'll see a really nice distribution of transactions in a bank. And suddenly, all the way out here, like seven standard deviations to the right, you see that there are multiple transactions that have taken place and you can immediately zoom in on those and then go ahead and actually flag those transactions and start to investigate them. Um, so that's a visual technique. Then algorithmically, we also f figured out uh, a number of very interesting ways that we can look for deviations in terms of repeated values that show up that look uh, aberrant, or to be able to find out um, how to join different data sets in a way that the interesting aspect of the join is not the things that actually connected, but the things that didn't connect, because that's how you know that there's an anomaly in the way that the data is structured. So the combination of scale, visual, and algorithmic techniques uh, allows people to iterate in a very fast manner to be able to find those needles in the haystack, which is why those, those banks are, are going with Pexada as an enterprise class platform. Great story. So once you've, I mean, this is, this is a, it's a very, very clear um, example with hard, you know, hard ROI. Um, is it difficult to translate that into um, other use cases in different industries, or do you just go deeper into the bank? Uh, great, great question. So I, I think our vision has always been to be a horizontal information platform for the enterprise. Right? That's very clearly where, where we're going. And the technology that we have built is a horizontal technology. Um, so our goal has been to become the de facto you know, next generation information platform across multiple different industry segments. And if you look at our customers, not just in banking or in the government sector, but um, if you look in consumer products, uh, for example, Del Monte is a very well-known customer, customer of ours. Obviously nothing to do with banking. Um, we're you know, that very large semiconductor company that, that many people know has nothing to do with banking. So so um, the, the approach that we've taken is to build a horizontal set of data transformation capabilities, governance capabilities, collaboration capabilities, and then over time to layer on notions of solution constructs on top of it, right? So um, taking, taking the core platform and then adding connectivity and models and that kind of thing to make them richer and more packaged from a solution perspective. So let me ask you, the, I mean, the, the, um, the pipeline from data prep you know, to uh, all the way to to and through the analytic function, it's it's met by multiple tools today because it is. you know we just don't have that level of integration. Mm -hmm. But if um, one of the key attributes that people need in terms of governance is lineage, what would you plug into so that a customer who's got a multi-vendor sort of pipeline yep. has to? What do they have to manage? Sure, great, great question. So. There's both within product lineage and then the broader ecosystem right. lineage, right? So right. the first, in order to play in the broader ecosystem, your product has to have very deep lineage and governance capabilities. Okay. So when we established the data preparation category, we said that there were five pillars to building an enterprise class data preparation platform. There was integration, there was quality, there was enrichment, there was governance and collaboration. Right? Those all have to be part of one unified platform, not 15 different tools. So if, if you start with that mentality, from day one, we recorded every single step that the end user takes uh, on, on the data. Everything we do in our system is versioned. Right? So you can actually roll back the clock and look at exactly what George did or somebody else did in the system and see what steps they took, when they took those steps, were other people involved, et cetera. 
um, we version all of the data sets that actually flow through the system, both the imported data sets and the exported data sets. So point number one from a lineage perspective is that in order to be a good system uh, or, or a good citizen, good citizen. In, in, the, in the whole uh, pipeline, you yourself have to have very deep governance capabilities for the pi part of the pipeline that you own. And uh, that, is, that is something that we have had from day one. However, to, to your point, um, we don't cover the entire end-to-end -end spectrum of all data sources. If they don't flow through Paxata, well, first of all, shame on you. They should flow through <laughs> Paxata, but if they don't, um, obviously you want to be able to connect that um, to other systems. And uh, because we uh, chose to go with the REST API-based approach where the entire platform is enabled through REST, um, we can use the REST API to connect to other uh, centralized lineage systems uh, like Cloudera Navigator, uh, like the Atlas project with the, which the Hortonworks folks are, are pushing and that sort of thing. Uh, and of course, also in more traditional systems as well. All right, okay. well, and Shad, unfortunately we're out of time, which is the bad news. The good news is, Prakash, you're out. <laughs> you're not coming back. So when we, go, when we see you at Spark, you're back on again. So you lost, you snooze, you lose. I'm enough. just the stunt double. That's right. He's taking care of customers, and that, that makes a lot of sense. So that's great. So thank you. Great insight into some great stories. It's really important that people understand how their peers get started, where they're using this technology, so it's not just a bunch of guys talking tech. It's actually people solving business problems. Yes. Uh, there's huge value in, in this whole space, and uh, we're very grateful to have the opportunity to speak with you gentlemen on theCUBE. Absolutely. Glad, glad you came. Hopefully we'll see you Thank uh, you. maybe at Spark Summit in San Francisco. So we will be at Spark Summit uh, West, but want to make sure you log on to Twitter. Take a look at the, the Twitter handle for theCUBE is at theCUBE. Uh, you'll see all of our CUBE gems and our Twitter cards and our CUBE cards and you know, all of the great conversations that come out of the CUBE interviews, we're really excited because we get really smart people on who are, you know, inventing this technology, implementing this technology, changing the world with the technology, and it's great for them to come on unscripted, share their insight with you, our audience, and our community. Um, and so we're really, we're really thankful and, and thankful to our sponsors as well, Paxata uh, sponsors uh, the CUBE. And we've got a few who are here. You can see we've got a lot of gear, we've got a lot of people, you know, People got kids, they got to eat, shoes, you know, the whole story. So without sponsors, we couldn't do it. So thanks a lot for watching. We are live in San Francisco at Big Data SV 2016. We'll be back with our next guest over this short break. Thanks for watching. Thank you.